Hola amigos de Bricks en Chile, ¿cómo están? Yo soy Curibí y el día de hoy vengo a platicarles algo muy interesante. Fíjense que Lego me ha estado invitando a participar en unas entrevistas con participantes de la temporada 4 de Lego Masters, que es un show que están pasando acá en Estados Unidos. Y Bricks en Chile ha sido uno de los invitados a participar en estas entrevistas y pues me ha tocado a mí. Así es que vengo a compartir con ustedes la más reciente, que fue una entrevista que tuvimos con Stacy Roy. Stacy Roy fue la ganadora de la temporada pasada junto con Nick. Si no la has visto, pues ponte al corriente. Si vas al corriente con esta temporada, sabrás entonces que Stacy fue invitada especial en el último episodio. Entonces, pues tuvimos la oportunidad de pasar un ratito con ella, le hicimos algunas preguntas y te las voy a presentar a continuación. Ahora, la parte más interesante de esto es que vamos a continuar entrevistando a participantes de esta temporada. Así es que si no estás al corriente, por favor, ve todos los episodios lo más pronto que puedas. Porque si tú me dejas aquí abajo la pregunta que a ti te gustaría hacerles, puede que yo la elija para hacer esa pregunta en mi próxima entrevista y en el video que hagamos de esa entrevista podrá salir tu pregunta. Así es que eh, les encargo que se suscriban para que sepan cuando los próximos videos van a a salir y que nos dejen el comentario para saber qué preguntas hacerles a los próximos participantes. Los dejo aquí entonces con la entrevista de Stacy Roy. Que la disfruten. Adiós. Now that you've won season three, how would you say your life has changed from before? Uh, so I, I really had no idea what to expect after winning Lego Masters, and it's been so much more than I ever could have imagined. It's been amazing. The response from the, the fans, the community, the AFALS has been so wonderful. And I have been traveling nonstop all over North America, Canada and the US, going to as many conventions as I possibly can, doing meet and greets, uh, doing different speaking engagements. I also got to go to my first ever San Diego Comic-Con, which was such a bucket list item for me. And not only did I get to go, I got to host a panel at San Diego Comic-Con and it was incredible so I have been loving every moment of it it's it's been more than I ever thought it could be and I'm really excited for whoever wins season four because their life is going to change in the best way possible now that you are a judge and you're on the other side of the table how has that experience been for you and of course not giving out spoilers but for this particular episode how is the feeling of being a judge Judging is so difficult. I have so much respect for Brickmaster, Jamie, and Amy. I don't know how they do it. I judged my first ever junior master competition, which was at Legoland New York this year. And it was so hard. I was just like, I need to call them. Like, can I, anyone help me with these decisions? It was so challenging because the bills are always so good. And being on this, I wouldn't say I necessarily get to be a judge. I have to pick out or spot which item is real and which items are Lego. And it was really hard. Wait until you guys see the episode. The bills are so good. I was like a deer in headlights. I had no idea. I was just like looking out at the room being like, everything looks real. You guys are in for a treat. The builds are amazing. Well, thank you very much. Hey, Stacy. Um, Bethany is one of our Tips and Bricks contributors who always has a question that she likes to ask our contestants, but especially as a winner of LEGO Masters, we would love your insight into what tips you would give to kids who like want to be a LEGO Master at home. What's something that they can do from home to like aspire to where you are now? So I think if you love LEGO, something you want to do is, I guess I would say this more for the adults, but practice structured creativity. And when it comes to the kids, I'm like, just get creative and build, practice the challenges that you see on the show. Obviously at, at a smaller scale, maybe you don't need to do a full on 24 hour challenge, but just practice them at a smaller scale and just have fun and think about the story and the different pieces that you're using from maybe Lego sets that you have at home and just keep building. You obviously have like lots of interest and passions that exist outside of Lego. So I'm kind of curious like how you meld these different parts of your life and personality to inspire some of the builds that you do. Oh, that's a really interesting question. So I, I always I always joke and say my life pretty much revolves around food, drink, and Lego. 
And I have definitely found a way to meld those things because I think there's always story in anything that you're doing that's creative. So when I'm cooking a dish, I'm, I'm really thinking about the story that's behind this or what I want people to experience when they eat this dish. And I think the same thing kind of goes for Lego, what I want people to feel and think about when they see one of my Lego creations. And I just, I don't know, I guess I just find a way to make them all work together. And I just hope to inspire as many people as I can to just pursue anything that it is that they're passionate about and explore creativity. Awesome. Really good answer. I'm going to think about that when I'm cooking dinner tonight. <laughs> when you're think... cooking dinner tonight, yes. Really think about the story that you're trying to exactly. tell. And the colors. And <laughs> <laughs> how you can just make it the best experience for the people around you. Hey, Stacy, So good to see you again. Um, my question is, you know, just you're back. You know, we had no idea this was coming. What was it like to walk on set without the same sort of new newness to it all and to be back in this capacity? It was amazing. <laughs> I I didn't think I would be walking through those giant brick doors anytime soon. And it was so exciting to get to step back out onto set where I spent so much time building. I think when I was on Lego Master season three, I was there for about seven weeks building. So it was so fun to just get to step back out there and see everyone to get to give all the hugs. But it was hard not getting to build with the Lego. I'm not gonna lie, there's 5 million Lego bricks and I wasn't allowed to touch any the lego that part was a little bit challenging yes i'm sure but you also don't have any of the pressure so that's nice that's true that's true <laughs> but i feel well, like it was a different sort of pressure because they're like oh you're you're a lego master you should be able to tell what's lego and what's real but the builders this season are just so incredibly talented it was it was really hard to guess what was real and what wasn't i'm sure i'm sure well you know obviously you're coming back in this unique capacity and we know that each of the judges have something that they like stereotypically look for amy she's looking for the color for the story jamie it's about the functionality the the technical excellence you know, as, as a judge of sorts in this episode, what do you, what are you looking for and what stands out to you when somebody has a strong build on the season? Um, I think the most important thing for me and the thing that I feel like I brought to the table when I was on Lego masters is story. I always look for a good story. That's what really brings a build to life for me. And that's always what I gravitate towards and what I latch onto. So if anyone's thinking about being on Lego Masters, I always tell them, I'm like, really think about the stories that you want to tell. I love it. Thanks. So I know that Lego Masters contestants have like this awesome community and we always hear about the family. So for the contestants who are on season four and even future seasons as well, what do you recommend to them to like really be able to seize the day and make the most of their opportunity on the show and even while the show is airing as well? I mean, first off, the people that you get to meet on the show and like the family that you build is really, really special. I can't imagine any other scenario where you would get to do that with another person and get to build all these cool Lego creations. So your Lego family is everything and it's, it's such a wonderful experience. Um, I think as far as seizing opportunities go, do as many conventions and meet and greets as possible and respond to the people out there that really love Lego masters to all the a falls to all the families that watch this show. That has been such a highlight and a joy for me is going into my DMS and connecting with the families still to this day on a regular basis. I have families and kids that send me photos of their Lego creations. And it's amazing to see the creativity that this show sparks in the community. So really take that in, really connect with all the wonderful people around the world. This show brings everyone together and we all have one love and common passion and that's Lego. So soak it up as much as you can and enjoy it and make the most of it. So we know that the we've seen a lot stronger representation of women and people of color in some of the a fall community but as one of the two women who have won the lego masters title like how has that pressure of being a role model been and then what has like inspired you about that role of having young girls look up to you oh okay well it's it's been wonderful i mean i just want to inspire everyone to be as creative as they possibly can and to follow whatever dream that they have i i know growing up i i didn't think lego could be a 
job. I, Lego masters didn't exist. None of this. And it really just shows you that the world is just full of so much possibility and whatever it is that you love to do really go after it. So it's been a very humbling experience. And I just want to keep on inspiring as many, you know, young girls and everyone out there to just do whatever it is that they love to do. That's wonderful. And I think you're absolutely doing it. So keep that inspiration up. <laughs> so, you know, I'd love to understand any, is there any behind the scenes stories you can say about your time back on set, you know, whether it was with the, the, the staff, the cast, the, you know, our judges, our, our famous host, Will, any funny stories you can share? Any funny stories? <laughs> I feel like there was always a funny story. <laughs> We, we had a really crazy, wonderful cast for season three. Uh, we got up to all sorts of shenanigans. I'm not going to tell you all of them, uh, but we just had so much fun together. When we weren't building Lego on the show, we were hanging out. We were having fun. We were even doing some of our own little Lego build competitions on the side. It was, it was, it was just so much fun. And Oh man, there's so many things I want to tell you, but I know I shouldn't. Uh, but no, it was it was it was such a blast getting to meet everyone, and just we spent so much time together. We were also filming during probably not not quite the height of COVID, but almost. And I think that also brought us really close together because we were the only people that we could hang out with, and so we just really encouraged one another and did a lot of fun builds and hung out all the time. We had a few uh, injuries as well on set. I think we all remember the dog episode running after the collars and uh, crash crashing the table. That was <laughs> that was a really funny moment. And I just remember because I was in high heels and I wanted to get in the action and I was like, can I kick off my high heels and just like book it? And they were like, no. And I was like, okay, all right. So then I had the I had the two brothers behind me and they're like, Stacy, we don't want to trample you. So you just stay still. And so I just like kind of stood there for a second. Everyone blew past me. And then I like quickly like scurried along. Uh, but we we always had so much fun in those like competitive roles of racing for the the dog collar or the dinosaur eggs. And we just, we all, I think, embraced it and had as much fun as possible. So once in a lifetime opportunity. For sure. And what about this season? You know, now you're back in a new capacity. The judges, you know, I know they like to keep their distance, you know, when you're a contestant, but now that you're back, you know, any will or judging stories uh, that you can share? You know what? I, it was such a short time that I was on set. I was actually filming in New York at the time. And so I quickly flew into Atlanta and I think I was there for like 12 or 16 hours and including sleeping. Like I was there for such a short period of time. Uh, so I really tried to make the most out of it once I got to see everybody. I wish I had more time to talk to all the contestants contestants and hear about all the builds and how it's been going. Um, but unfortunately I had to get back right away. I will say it was funny that they called me squirrel on set because they really wanted to keep it top secret. They didn't want anyone to know who the special guest was. So when they would be on their walkie talkies, they'd be like squirrel is moving down the hallway. So I was just called squirrel all day. And I thought that was hilarious. And I think they had no idea that I was coming in to uh, try and spot which items were real and which ones were Lego. Well, amazing. We can't wait to see you on this episode. Yeah, I can't wait. I think I think you guys are gonna love this episode. This is one of those challenges that I wish we could have done on Lego Masters. I think it's really cool. I think the fans and the A-Falls are gonna love it. And you're gonna see just how talented these builders are because good luck. Good luck to everyone watching. You're not going to know what's real and what's not. Amazing. Thanks. I wanted to ask a little bit about the whole idea of the winners of this show are going to have their creation made into a set. <clears throat> so that's public. How cool is that? Well, your jaw just dropped. So it sounds like that's new to you. But um, I'm just kind of curious about how you would have felt had your set, the bookcase, had been made into a set and what part of the bookshelf are you most proud of? So I think that has to be the highest honor if one of your builds gets turned into a Lego set. I think that's so amazing. I think that's such a wonderful thing for the winners to get to experience. I'm so excited. I would love if our Lego bookshelf was turned into a set because 
that bookshelf was full of memories from my childhood and Nick's childhood. And we loved building it so much. I think probably my favorite part of the bookshelf Oh, that's tough because there's a lot of memories in there. But I think probably my favorite part of the bookshelf is our working television set where it showed Bella the Ballerina from, I think it was episode three with the mechanical bull fighting a dinosaur, which plays back into episode two where we did dinosaur builds with Chris Pratt. And I just thought it was such a cool thing that we had on the bookshelf. It was super old school and it just right. reminded me of playing video games when I was a little kid. So that's probably the part of the build that I'm the most proud of and I think is just really unique and special. And I would have loved for it to be turned into a Lego set. And so whoever wins season four of Lego Masters, I think that's going to just be such an honor uh, that other people get to build your creation at a smaller scale. Have you done any designs that were inspired by some of the previous builds that you've done on the show? And have you made those available to anybody for uh, any kind of promotion? Like, for example, I know that Nick has done a little corgi, right? Yes. A little, little corgi that he even put the instructions up there. And I made one. That's why I know. <laughs> <And> I said <laughs> I made one that looks like my old dog. And then I'm going to try to make another one like my new dog. So I know he's done that. I was yeah, curious so one if of the great done... things that Nick did do was yeah. he created all of our builds from the show in mini versions, actually at right. two different scales. The first scale uh, mini version, you can actually find the YouTube videos and be able to recreate mm -hmm. those at home yourself, which is really cool. I actually have some of them just like sitting over <laughs> here. They're yeah. amazing. Um, for me, I've really been getting into the photography and videography of Lego. So something that I did recently was I created a stop motion Lego friends celebration. Mm -hmm. So because of my trophy, I've got all of our minifigs from a season three on Lego masters. And I took the friends Lego sets and I put them all in getting ready to celebrate and watch season four. So I've been really just getting into having fun and being creative of uh with the photography and the storytelling of that i love stop motion animation so that's great that you're doing that and it's i'm gonna so look hard, for that it's so hard it takes forever my it very first so mock was 20 seconds of a video at bricks by the bay that was my introduction to cons and i was like it took me three hours to do this thing <laughs> it's like 20 seconds long so that's oh. Amazing okay. that you're doing that. And um, is that video available for us? Or? It is. So it's actually on my Instagram. So just so you guys okay. know, my Instagram, Twitter, all that kind of stuff. Or does Twitter even exist anymore? Um, at the Stacy Roy. And you can see it there. And I want to say it's about like 35, 40 seconds long. And it probably took me like four days. <laughs> Yeah, to film it and edit it. It took so long. It was so much fun, though. And the sound effects and oh, yeah, the sound, everything. everything, like putting yeah. all the pieces together. And it's really how I wish we could have watched season four is having all of season three <laughs> together again to watch and cheer on the new contestants. Right. Fun little watch party. So thank you for sharing that. It's great to, to see your involvement with stop motion animation. So maybe maybe at a future time, we'll have a chance to chat more about that, too. Hi, Stacey. Kuri B with Bricks in Chile here. And my question is around your brainstorming and the ideation process behind the build for the final challenge, the, the bookshelf, right? Like, what's the brainstorming like? Yeah, absolutely. So Nick and I, we just kind of came up with the idea all of a sudden, a lot of people had thought about what their finale would be going into the show. We hadn't really talked about it a lot. And then the second it came to us, it actually, it started off as a nightstand, like a nightstand full of like little memories and like a picture frame and all of that. And then we just kind of expanded on that idea. And we really wanted to do a build that showed our journey on Lego Masters, but also showed why we loved Lego in the first place. So the second we came up with the bookshelf idea, we had so many things that we wanted to build. I truly believe had they given us another 100 hours, we could have built a whole bedroom, <laughs> which is full of memories and things. It wouldn't have just been a bookshelf. It would have been other like a nightstand and everything. Uh, and we just, we had so much fun with it. And when we wrote down all of the ideas, we just had pages, pages of memories from our childhood. And obviously we couldn't, 
build all of the things that we thought of. But that's when we knew we were really on to something because we were so excited and we just wanted to talk nonstop about our idea. And we had so much fun building. And then when they threw us that mid episode twist, it was so perfect. I can't believe they give they gave us sets from our childhood to put into our build. Like it could not have been more perfect. And then a couple hours into that, our family members walked out, like everything just aligned. And we had so much fun doing that build. And it's something I'm really proud of. And in case you didn't know, you can actually go see it at Legoland in New York. Thanks, Stacy. That's awesome. My second question is, do you have a favorite Lego set type? Like when it comes to ideas, technique, architecture, or specific collection? Oh, that's so tough. <laughs> and I feel like I'm always changing my answer. Uh, I, okay, I love any Star Wars Lego builds. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. If we weren't decorated for Halloween right now, you would see my Star Wars Lego collection behind me. Uh, but recently, because of being on Lego Masters season three, it's been making me think a lot about my childhood sets and the set that I got to build with on Lego Masters for that finale episode was the Poolside Paradise. So I'm finding lots of different parts and pieces to recreate that and I'm really enjoying it. Sweet, thank you. And uh, what about the latest, most recent set that you've built? I've been building a lot. <laughs> uh, probably, I'm all, well, the one I'm building right now that I'm not quite finished is Diagon Alley, uh, which is great. But I don't think anyone should print this right now, but if you really wanna know the truth, so while I say I'm working on Diagon Alley right now, I may or may not need to order a few pieces to finish that set. <laughs> but that is what I'm working on building right now. And I also, but I, I am not allowing myself to open the box just yet. I've got the Nintendo set. I've wanted that one for a really long time and it's sitting upstairs in the box. I haven't started it just yet, but I can't wait. That's awesome. I love the NES set myself. I have that one. Um, are you a part of any Lego user groups or lugs? No, I don't think I am. <laughs> I was like, that's what? a really short answer compared to all the other answers I gave today. Uh, but I do connect with my Lego master family on a regular basis and work on builds together. Y bueno, ¿qué te pareció? ¿Te gustó este tipo de dinámica? ¿Tienes alguna recomendación para hacer estos videos mejores? Déjanosla en los comentarios, porque de verdad, vienen otros y vienen buenos. Entonces, te repito, si te gustaría hacer una pregunta, déjala en un comentario, déjanos un like, suscríbete y nos vemos en el próximo. Gracias.